You want to come <coughs> conduct a meeting for me? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, welcome. Thank you. Um, I'll ask the clerk to please call roll. Cook? Hopkins? Here. Odenell? Patterson? Thank you. Richardson? Here. Thank you. Aaron Scott? Here. Bill Scott? Here. Thank you. Bunkle? Here. Wormowski. Williams? They call you part time. Thank you. Williams? Here. That's part time for me. Where is it? That's Here. right. Here. Uh, the first one that's done on your agenda is just to let people know. Lynn Cray, I don't know if you know Lynn, he's run uh, the JBC grounds since they closed. Uh, how many years ago was, has that been? Four years? He informed me last week that he, uh, CMS is terminating him. So that means we don't have anybody at the JBC grounds. Uh, Lynn works about seven days a week, um, three to four hours a day. He would, he would check all the buildings. He would pump out the water. Uh, real good guy, very, very astute. The police department and Lynn have a good relationship. Um, We've been trying to get his job back for him. I mean, through Jeff Purcelli, lobbyist, C.D. Davis, Meyer, Myers made calls, myself, but he is terminated after tomorrow. So what's going to happen? Um, they said something about that they were going to get rid of personal service contracts and that maybe in a year or two that they would hire a vendor to come in and check. But a year or two is, uh, when you go one day, it's it's too yeah. late. So, you know, any plans of uh, JDC to, to get back to where it was are probably not gonna happen as far as, uh, you know, buildings. So, uh, we're trying though, just to let you know. What about the we're mowing? working. They're still, they're still with mowing now, right? Yeah, El Elm City still has the mowing contract, and that's good for another five years. Tom Frederick uh, came into my office uh, last Friday and was concerned about Lynn not being there. But yes, the mowing will be taking place by Elm City, but it's just a big loss that Lynn's going to lose his job and not have a person to man the building. So. It's, it's going to be more power or more input to our police department. Um, you know, it's more burden on them. So we'll see what happens. So we're trying though. Um, outside of that, uh, we have a request from Jacksonville Main Street. And uh, Kristen, uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, so, as hopefully everyone knows, the concert series will continue this summer. We had, um, we did not receive the Levitt and Grant, but we did secure a replacement sponsor, Oakley Crypto Tech, um, a local firm owned by Tripp and Donna Fezzer, stepped in, um, and they are now the title sponsors. So the new name of the concert series is the Oakley Crypto Tech Downtown Concert Series. It will take place over uh, eight weeks instead of 10, and it will be every Friday night in June and July. Since we do not have a lot of grant, we have a lot more flexibility, so we are not hosting a concert on uh, the date of the Morgan County Fair. So we were really happy to be able to do that. Um, um, last year, the city Generalist, generously sponsored this series at the five thousand uh, dollar mark. Last year, we didn't actually even have a five thousand dollar category. Um, we ad adapted our sponsor form to um, create a five thousand dollar level so that you get more for your money, more exposure, um, more of a thank you for that. The biggest difference, if you look between festival and headliner sponsors, is that with a Headliner sponsored, you get exposure for one concert. So you get the tent, um, you got 10 passes, some snacks, you got to announce the band. Your name was on that one concert for all of the promotion. With the 5,000, your name is on all eight concerts, um, all materials, all radio, all television. 
plus you get five passes for every single concert. You have the option of putting up a tent at every single concert, plus we give you the one concert where we put the tent up for you, we provide the snacks, we give you the passes, and you can have your own party and announce the band. So we just try to make it um, a little bit more, more for your money. So we are asking again for a $5,000 sponsorship for the concert series and hope you will uh, consider that. We are on a pretty strict timeline. Um, the information went out to the city a while ago, um, so I'm sorry that I'm just now here to talk to you about it. But we would like to be able to start going to um, production next week. Um, so a quick decision is asked of you in, in this matter. Um, any questions on that? How many $5,000 sponsors do you get? Um, right now, I believe we just have one other. Um, and that's the... Um, you don't have to say it. Okay, thank you, because I'm drawing a blank now. <laughs> I think there's just one other at that level. Um, so above you would just be Oatly. Um, and then it would be you and maybe one, two others at that uh, festival sponsorship level. All right, I'll get this to you. Thank you. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask for would be the um, leniency, I guess, that you gave us at last year's concert regarding the alcohol. We would sell the alcohol in the reusable cups, which minimizes trash. It also helps us uh, maintain who's drinking, who's not. Um, I don't believe in the past two years that we've hosted this, we've had a single incident. Um, again, we will work with Citizens Police Academy. They've already agreed to attend every concert to help us with security if needed. And I'll also talk with the police department and ask them uh, to have some officers come and walk around like they've done in the past as well. Any questions for me? Any concerns? Okay, no. thank think, you. Uh, they do a great job. I think, you know, we do this downtown for just exactly what they're trying to do. And I think we need to support this. So. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to head out so that. She yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Kristen. Good job. This is the same motion. I know. I love that. Part, I'm sure. <laughs> all, these cub, all these Cub fans, all of a sudden, I just don't. Her <laughs> teacher last year was a Cub fan, and she kept coming home. Mom, we're going to be Cub fans. Mm. No, we're not. Honey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. Um, the next item is a discuss vending services proposal. Um, there's two gentlemen, Matt Coors and Sean Smith. They both work at, I believe, Jacksonville Savings Bank, but they're, uh, this is not Jacksonville Savings Bank. They're independent on this. Um, Matt and Sean submitted a proposal to myself and Kelly Hall and Marcy, Chairman of Parks and Lakes, about a vending machine uh, wanting to put a vending machine, a Coke, basically a Pepsi or Coke or water machine, at Community Park by the community center. Their reasoning was Casey's is closed. Um, they don't want to compete with Jacksonville Soccer Association. They won't. They won't use the machine on the Saturdays. But guess what? Those that concession is not always open because during the week there's a lot of activity, a lot of practices going on and they felt a need for a vending machine there throughout the week at community park center and they they have a spot uh, kelly and i and marcy met and we, we think it's a good thing uh, they they actually said some things about wanting to do it uh, at nichols park eventually um, we have two vendors currently at nichols park with butch wood and uh, the city at the uh, Nichols Park Swing Pool, but uh, you know we, we think it's a good good thing. Uh, eventually they might expand, but we want to just try to at Community Park this year. They would give us a gross sales a six percent. That's uh, in line with what Butch Wood pays um, per year. So everybody. Good with a vending machine going on? Yes. It sounds really good. Um, there's, in general, a kick for 
you tell from giving healthy alternatives? Is there going to be water or, or stuff that's not just candy and, and sugar water? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, I, I know there would be water in the machine. Um, that's that, one, that's exactly. one thing I can... If you know power, Matt and Sean, they're there. probably into that. Is there power there, Kelly? No. We have to run power. We have to run power. Yeah, that's one thing. Um, I can. I can. Like Jack, I don't know exactly what to do for alternatives, but whatever the healthy alternative, fifty percent option. That's a good idea. <laughs> it's just you know, I mean, Dairy Queen's a little bit up the road. It's not right across the street like Casey's was. And there is a need. Um, there's a lot of people going through there. Our contracts like this usually get out for vending services and most. They're the only ones that, that have come forward, and we haven't advertised to do this, so I'm just bringing it up tonight. We've got two weeks, um, but we are going, going to have to uh, do a resolution for the contract in a couple weeks. But if you have any questions for Sean or Matt, they're very accessible. I mean, and who is this with? Uh, CNS Holdings is their name. So they plan to come out and turn the vending machine on and off Saturday morning and Saturday night? Uh, or maybe that's like a good you've question. seen somewhere they've got a, like a wire or something that comes across a wire gate that shuts them They've off. talked to the Jacksonville Soccer Association the, and the folks of the Soccer Association that they have no issues with this. It's nice for the kids though during the week. Yeah. Well, it'll be on the agenda at the next meeting, but if you have any questions for these gentlemen, please reach out. They're very accessible. Well, I didn't hear. What did Kelly, what did you say on the cost of that to run the electricity there? You have to do some electricity. Well, I'm guessing 500 maybe. We can we can take care of that. Can they pay for that? No, they do not. That, that was our cost in the contract. In the contract, that's our cost. We get 6%. Gross, so it kind of breaks the water. So, what happens when the gas station comes in? Do we turn them off? Cross that bridge and get it. I know, that's my part of the key thing. Yeah. So. Pretty well boarded up right now. I mean, we will never get our five hundred dollars back then. Okay, city so attorney's report. Thank you. A couple of items. First, uh, discuss transfer of the twenty eighteen home rule volume caps. This is a standard request we get each year from Waida that if we're not going to go out bonding our cap amount, which is a little over two million dollars, they ask that we. Uh, assign it to them. They are always there. If we want to do a project, even in excess of what our volume cap is, to get money back to us, we have not had that necessity up to this point. <laughs> if we don't do this um, after March 31st or April 1st or sometime, the state takes our volume cap and allocates it wherever they want it to go. So at least by doing this, we're keeping it in Central Illinois. And we've done this several years. Any questions on that? Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Second item, uh, opening a can of worms. Discuss the fireworks ordinance. <laughs> As we did some checking on the racetrack, the simple answer is technically the racetrack and the county fair board is their own jurisdiction as far as what they want to have go on out there. It's not so much a city decision. They have to go through the county fair board to get fireworks out there. And so they're working on that, and they may or may not do that. It's not a major item for them. Set that aside. As we looked at that, what we came to the realization was what we have typically out on Morton Avenue is completely illegal as far as what they're selling out there. Um, Doug can chime in as I misstate things as I have a tendency to do when I talk about this, but they are selling to a large extent, commercial grade fireworks. Our ordinance talks about fireworks and then says what is not a firework, such as snakes and sparklers and little cap guns and those sorts of things. Everything else is a commercial grade firework. 
you cannot sell commercial grade fireworks without a license from the state and a license from the city pursuant to an ordinance that the city would adopt. Correct. The, the city would have to adopt an ordinance to allow the sale. Right now, according to the city ordinance and the, the state law, is you cannot sell, possess, distribute, yada, 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 unless you have a permit that you have applied for and has been issued by the local authority. So, in a nutshell, what's going on on Morton is they're sitting up their, their merchant areas, they're selling the consumer grade fireworks, but in order for somebody to actually legally purchase from them, they'd have to pr uh, produce a permit from the local authorities stating that they can have a display. So that's what code that enforcement is police when it shuts that up to say you can't do that. So far, what they've been doing, we were not aware of what the requirements of the law was. They simply got an itinerant merchant's license and set up. And if all they were selling were the fire uh, poppers and those types of things, it would be fine. In order for them to legally sell what they sell, <coughs> the majority of what the items they sell, they need this commercial grade permit. That would be easy enough. We can adopt an ordinance that gives the city authority to issue a commercial grade permit. Because our current ordinance permits the discharge of fireworks for the 4th of July, but it does not permit the sale of commercial grade fireworks. The easy part would be to adopt an ordinance with the commercial grade fireworks and let them sell. The hard part is they cannot sell to anyone who also does not have a commercial grade permit to shoot off the fireworks. So every person that goes out there needs a permit, which requires a class that they would take. It's designed, the state statute is designed more for organizations to purchase these. Kiwanis or Rotary or somebody like that and then have someone who shoots off fireworks. It's not really designed for you or I to go out there with our permit buy these fireworks at commercial grade, go off and shoot them off in our backyard. We only bring this to your attention because the ordinance as we have it right now does not allow the sale of commercial grade fireworks under any circumstance. Correct. And we can simply enforce that ordinance. We want to give word out to the vendors early on since they've been on set up out there for years that this will not be allowed this year. The alternative is we can very quickly adopt an ordinance that would allow us to issue them the necessary permit. If they've got their state permit, they come to us, we would give them the permit so they can sell. But then it's an enforcement issue. They are supposed to get a copy of the individual's permit each time they make a sale. And whether we want to get into the enforcement of that or simply enforce the ordinance that we have from here on out with plenty of notice to the vendors and probably see them simply move outside the city limits and continue to sell. Do we get sales tax revenue or anything? I don't know that we do now, Skip. They probably don't. So most itinerant merchants are not sitting over their sales tax. I think most yeah. of Precinct 1 and part of Precinct 2 are permitted because there's a lot of fireworks going on. There. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's as good as Jacksonville's. It is. And we're not going to stop all that. I'm just questioning if we. If we actually go to this permit process where you are giving an individual a permit to shoot off fireworks, we're going to have even more fireworks being shot off out there because they can do it legally. Other communities are going through the same process. You mentioned what? Charleston, Mattoon, Macomb, West Peoria. Um, they're actually looking at not allowing these, these uh, temporary merchant sites for the fireworks to come in. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't have a problem allowing consumer grade fireworks in the city, but as long as it's for like an organization, association, an anniversary of a, a business, or if they want to have a outdoor amusement or something like that, because there's parameters that we have to adhere to state law. There has to be site inspections, classes, and we're not talking about the pyrotechnics or the uh, fireworks that they use for the 4th of July. These are just consumer grade stuff. Um, they're low aerial, they do it downtown on the main street for those things that go on down there. So I don't have a problem doing it, it's just that right now we don't allow it in the city limit to sell, possess, distribute without a permit. You have to have a permit to do it. And I believe the ordinance was written 
for those professional displays and not for the consumer grade. Yeah. Has, has anybody had a discussion with the vendor? Not yet. Well, we wanted to bring it to your attention creates, first. And then I mean, we can, we can deny it and move it outside the city limits or South Jacksonville or in Morton County. They're still going to bring them in here, so that creates a problem for the chief because none of those people are permitted. It's be the same as it was last year. Whoever shoots yeah. fireworks are for subject to prosecution for having fireworks in the city limits. So the other thing we're doing is like all the places I'm working who like rent out their lot for a couple bucks, so they're almost going to be losing money. Yeah. yeah. And then you got to eliminate, eliminate the display. You know, yeah. We won't eliminate the display. Already. The question is, now that we are aware, <clears throat> I'm aware that those are not properly licensed through the state or through the city, are we simply going to allow them to continue to do it? Our feeling, Doug and I, is that we would say very early on, we don't have an ordinance that allows you to do this. You cannot set up in city limits. Right. Uh, the way the city ordinance is written right now is, you know, they nobody can go to those. It's not illegal for them to set up and sell. They've been licensed through the state. What's not the legal side of it is just anybody walking in and be able to purchase the stuff. Um, and then again, who's who's responsible for policing that, so to speak? Is it the guy that's selling it, or is it the guy that's buying it, or is it the city that's liable for the enforcement? Or do you got a state inspector that comes in and checks the paperwork to see how many they sold? Yeah. And where has this place been? I mean, I've never I've seen pictures. <laughs> or in Main Street. Right in Main Street. And then we're at the Merchant Street. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. yeah. like yeah. yeah. Dunkin' Donuts was, or yeah. one, and there's one over by Pathway. I, I just never thought those were commercial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that, that was like How much is the sweet license? stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, We can set that license fee up at anything we want. How much is the current license for the vendor? Well, they're going to turn it in. I'd turn our merchants like 25 bucks. Currently, there's no fee for a permit. Um, our permits have been redone and upgraded to allow for consumer grade. Uh, we work with central states to upgrade our permitting process and along with the state fire marshal. So our permits are in order. It's just what are we going to allow in that? Those are when is the permit that they will get from Skip's office order to set up? They, the permit from Skip's office, as long as they're licensed from the state, the city will allow them to sell. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, I think Skip's fine under that merchant license. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess I guess my perspective is if, I appreciate you bringing this to our attention. I think I'd like that you've got some insight from what other municipalities are doing. So I, I would be you know curious when this comes before us again. What are what's the direction that other municipalities plan to go? Um, because like I think I what think you just said pushing last city limits. Yeah, I think what most of them are doing in. is adopting an ordinance <clears throat> that would authorize commercial grade to be sold in the city with the hopes that then organizations could be licensed to use those and purchase from there. And then it's an enforcement issue, making sure that they have all of their, uh, everyone they sell to has a permit to discharge those fireworks. Correct. And on, on the consumer grade stuff, um, all that's required is a light or a, they have to come to a class hosted by the fire department then they get licensed and permitted through the fire department after a site inspection and insurance and if we want to attach any fees to that permit. Now there is certain parameters that they have to adhere to at the display site as far as distances, overhead, obstructions, things like that. So you physically have to go out and inspect the display site that they're willing to shoot at. Um, so if, you know, if we're going to open this up at 4th of July, we just then now there, I don't think there's any way we can keep up with trying to keep everybody legal for no. wanting to shoot fireworks. Well, you can't keep them. legal who's coming in and buying it. My personal belief, Senator Don and Tony, is we can't govern this. Yeah, I mean, it's after a while, come on. You know, it's like... It is a nightmare on my end of town, though. Hey, well, they you know what? They go somewhere and get them. Yeah. The same in our, in our <clears throat> ward. I mean, I see guys shooting stuff over there by... Is uh, it landing in your driveway? Who knows? Mine. In the backyard. <laughs> well, y'all, I got other things landing in your driveway. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what I'm hearing then is that we don't want to go the ordinance route to allow commercial grade fireworks, which means our ordinance on the books means they cannot be out there. That's the way I'm looking at it. Okay. Anybody, Anybody else, else got any other opinion? I'd say no. They don't sell them in town. You can't. You can't. 
you know, you're not going to be on them all the time. You're not going to be checking their books. There's no manpower to do that. Just to let you know, there's only been one vendor that's been constant. And then we had another vendor that came in, but they had to almost wait three or four days after they set up before they even got their state license. So, I mean, they set up, but they didn't have they didn't have the permits or anything to do anything. So there's only been two the last few years, and before that, it's just been one. And with this input, we'll notify the vendors probably still this week that there we do not have an ordinance that allows them to sell. They will not be allowed to sell commercial grade fireworks from the city limits. That way, they've, they've already got the inventory. they got to have someplace else to set up. Andy, you can explain that to Billy. I just can't wait. I can't wait for that conversation. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I want. I, I think that's our way of determining uh, what we can help. It won't determine the bill of sales tax. Yeah, it helps us with the sales tax. Okay. And then it's their problem. Um, but just to let you know. Um, as far as what brought all this up was the uh, Board of Outlaw race is coming up in April, uh, two weeks from Friday, and if if they choose to do fireworks, we don't have a say. Right. They he, Mr. Dobson can go to the fair board Makes and sense. say, and if the fair board says yes, you can shoot them off, then. That's their business. Yeah, I'm, so, just, I'm just letting everybody know. <laughs> how, does, how do we say, have a say on what kind of races? But it's public. in the city of Jacksonville. It is. But under this, under state law, county and state fair associations are exempt from the power protection law. But this isn't a county event. This isn't the county fair. This is like when mm -hmm. that's what they'll have to deal with. Yeah. They'll have to decide whether they're going to allow their license to be used. I don't so, think so he's going to. I don't think they're going to do it. So the, county, so the county fair can allow a, a vendor to come there and set up and sell fireworks as their... No, 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 shoot no, up, no, set off fireworks. no, but I'm saying if they can do whatever they want on a county property, then so why, I mean, why do we have any regulations? They just send the sound order and there's nothing to It's just the right. pyrotechnic laws that we have do not apply to them. They have their own... Uh, the pyrotechnic law doesn't apply to them as far as the permitting process. They still have to adhere to what an NPA and the, uh, the pyrotechnic association standards are for, for display, whether that's professional grade or consumer grade. So if the county board says it's okay to do a giant fireworks we display did. and they can do whatever they want. They've, they've, done, they've, done, they've done it for years. We've been they've been doing it. Yeah. I remember going out there and yeah. they yeah. yeah. blown yeah. every concert they were Get into the pyrotechnics at the uh, grand Because I wasn't against them doing what they were talking about. I mean, I, everyone I talked to from Ward 4 and Ward 5, when I asked them about setting off the fireworks, they didn't trust it because they didn't know what was going on. But then, if you actually look at what their proposal was, it was like a 20 second show that was mostly visual. Like, why not let them do that? It's totally fine. But I'm against us saying that the county board could do whatever they want. But you're saying they can do whatever they want? The state was statute that governs them exempts them from our pyrotechnic ordinances. Is that a fair way of saying it? So they don't have to go through the permitting process. They don't have to know if they're going to have a show. They are strongly encouraged to work with us, with the fire department, per se. Um, or making sure the show or the display is up to date. I think we should have fireworks every night, and we need to go after them on a nuisance. Oh, right. Theory or something. I can always work. Exactly. It should be weird. I'm surprised. Okay, committee reports tonight. Um, Mr. Walker, will you go by? Only one item tonight discuss revolving loan fund loan application. I have a revolving loan fund request. Uh, you should have some data in your folders regarding that, and it was emailed to you also. Uh, and that request came from Mr. John Brown, who is here this evening, to explain that to you and to make his request uh, official and let you know what he pl has planned. So take it away, John. Okay. Well, as word gets out fast around here, Jacksonville, 
Jacksonville, and most places. <laughs> Rachel and I are purchasing what was formerly known as the Northridge Hills Golf Course. Um, we've stewed over this. We live on the ninth green out there, so we look at this every morning, every night. We're going to raise our kids out there for the next 20 years, and we talk to everybody we could talk to, including the realtor, including the owner of the property, to see if there was any way to keep this thing a golf course, and the answer kept coming back, no, no, no. This thing is going to grow up in weeds, or he's going to bring heavy equipment in and push it all in, try to farm 40 acres if he can find somebody to come rent it. That was Mr. Warren Mosler's proposal for this property once Howard Pillsbury decided he was no longer able to run it, I think in January, how he, how he left. So um, Rachel and I last week came to an agreement with Mr. Mosler to purchase the property for $400,000, which is more than it can probably support from a cash flow perspective for somebody to run a golf course, bar, restaurant out of there. I made bank president of Prairie State Bank here in town. I have a $75 million lending portfolio, 500 plus customers. I know projects that are typically bankable. <laughs> Golf courses, restaurants, bars, usually not on the top of the list for commercial banking institutions. So looking at options of how I was gonna finance this project, um, the owner's gonna carry back a portion of the, of the financing. So he'll, he'll take a first mortgage on the property once he sells it to me. Uh, this gentleman's never been to the property. He's never seen the property since he purchased it. So he has no vested interest in Jacksonville whatsoever. And he's made that very clear throughout negotiations. Um, so he has been willing to, to carry back whatever portion of the financing I cannot get lined up elsewhere. So that's why I come here tonight is I'm asking if the city will do their part through the revolving loan fund to participate in 50% of the purchase price for starters. The next part of this is if you've been to the golf course in the last few years, the interior of the property is run down, the exterior of the property, the mechanicals of the property, the mowers, the pumps, um, everything about the property has been in a state of disrepair once again because the folks managing the property had limited resources and really couldn't do anything about it. They knew every way to fix that thing. They just couldn't get the job done. And the guy who owned it did not care. So we've got all the cost structure laid out. It's going to take hundred grand to do what we think it's going to take to get that facility, the bar, restaurant, and the golf course up to working order to where we can make this thing sustainable for a long, long time. We've got a couple million dollars vested in a street corner right down the street. So my family and I aren't going anywhere. Jacksonville is home for a long time. Uh, we're not out of towners. We're not here to get some money and then take off and run with it. Um, in fact, my rosiest projections have us making about $12,000 a year out of this whole adventure. And I'm quite certain that Rachel and I are gonna spend a lot more time than that on what this is gonna take. So um, I'm asking for your help for half the purchase price, half of the improvement money, and I know that's a big ask, um, but it's a big project. And it was gonna be a big, big eyesore if nobody decided they wanted to do anything about it. So. Well, first of all, I thank you for for stepping up um, because at, at the times that I have got there, I asked what would happen if it closed, and I know the person who owned it didn't really care, and so I'm uh, I'm glad that you're you're putting your foot out there. And, thank you. Yes. Thank you. What questions does anybody have for me at this stage of the game? <coughs> the order request was for two hundred and fifty thousand. Correct, John. That's correct. At 0.5 percent interest. That's correct. For 30 years. So 250. You said you only have 100. Purchase. Purchase. No, 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 I no. have. I have 183 thousand dollars in the revolving loan funds. I have two other requests pending. What are the other requests? One is for a Thai restaurant, and the other one is for a lady who has yet to come in, but. She threw a number out to me of fifty thousand dollars. Mrs. Williams, Andy, what? Well, yeah. So they're in the process of filling out applications. And as much as I like Thai food, <laughs> how could a restaurant, restaurant come to town? We're basically just <laughs> competing, having to compete with the existing restaurants. So well, it's not our job to determine. 
No, I, I'm just saying I would like to give more than hundred thousand dollars to the project. And it's something that sounds like it's really important. And I would like to do it in the other way. If we use every penny of that fund, a couple of things will happen. Number one, it'll only be replaced at a very slow rate. So it would pretty much preclude future loans. You're saying you want to use every penny too. You just want to use every penny for other two projects. No, I didn't say that's good. Okay. Um, let me finish. Um, any future request, once the fund is down to the point where there's not enough money in there for a project, I have to go to the state and ask for it. And I've never had to do that. I don't know if it's easier now or harder now or even possible now, but that's always the process that I've been told. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm not telling you, you not to, I mean, it's first come, first serve. Sure, I, I get that. That would just be my recommendation. Uh, if you want to give the whole amount, it still doesn't cover Mr. Rohn's request. So how do you use more than 100, though? Yeah, you, you're right. You said he's asking. <laughs> I know. So we can get him closer to what he needs to offer the fund circuit based on Well, if we give him 100 now, can he come back again later and get more of the other two projects on board forward? I suppose, yeah. yeah. Ron, what's our options when that fund is approved? As With what? I'm sorry, Mike. Do we have any options as a city once that fund is depleted? You just said something about going to the state. Go to the state. Yeah, yeah. So the there has been other funding done out of security investment. Wait, we can, you, we can go ask the state, but that doesn't mean they're going to do it. Also, when you when you go to ask the state, it triggers some things like they're going to want to do environmental reviews and so on and so forth. And, uh, it, we've, we've done this before when we need some money for downtown project. I, I don't know, it may be easier than what I think. I may be able to be able to, to call them up and get the ball rolling, but I get the, I get the impression that, that John has a timetable that he's operating on, and to assume that we could get anything done through the state within three or six months, that would be a big assumption probably. I'm talking about, Ron, is there anything internally as a city that we could trans, can we transfer money into that? Yeah, I, could, we, uh, uh, I don't know why you want to investment. investment. Yeah. You could, I guess, but okay. rather than transfer it in, just use it out of the fund that it's in, I guess. I know, but once it, I mean, you're saying that John and two others. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. There's not enough to go around. I'd have to check that mic to see what how that does, what that does to their accounting. Because I send them reports every six months telling them what balances are, and they might say, well, we're just, Hundred grand come from, and that may be okay. I don't know. I've never done this. If I could just make a suggestion, as Ben Franklin said, a bird in the hand is worth two in a bush. So if we have a good golf course in the hand, why mess it up for two projects that may or may not happen? Mr. Rome needs the money. We should help him out. Otherwise, that's going to be a big ice. Ron, your suggestion is a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, that's. I'm just telling you, with the hundred thousand, with with other requests out there, yeah. Right. Again, you give me the council so, decision here, but I, you know. This is. Will the hundred thousand help you, John? hundred, like I said, a hundred eighty-three, like Steve said, is better than a hundred, but it's still not what what John needs. Anything helps. Anything more helps. Any, anything helps. So I'm I'm not going to say that a hundred doesn't help. But it's You'll still it's, do it it's like project. most things that have gone on out there. It's well, how do we keep that molar running? Well, get the duct tape over there because we can't afford to go down and take it to a repair shop. I mean, that's the way that course is operated. No offense to anybody who's ever been involved in it for 20 years because that's been the I mean that's been all the means that are available to do so. So. I just know that golf course is a really good anchor for the Applebee Estates, which is a really good property tax generator for us and for the school schools and for the county and we should do everything we can to keep those housing values up and having that golf course out there is the absolute best thing to happen out there okay. the, the other thing with, with with the request and i understand the request because we've never done a 30 year program so it's always been maxed out at 15. Yeah. is there any way we can increase that to 125 and still have 50. sure I mean, yeah, I mean, anything, you know, possible. Ron, how have you accommodated others in the past that wanted to borrow more than you had in the revolving loan fund? I've never had to borrow. 
Okay. There's always been enough in there. To, okay. So the larger loans you made, I mean, you, when I was in your office, you mentioned JJ. The larger loans came out of the security investment. Program. Okay, so that wasn't the revolving loan fund. Correct? No. Okay, that's and that, that's the point revolving. I'm making is there are other funds available to loan from the city. If the council would choose to go in that direction, yes. okay. that's all I'm asking. So this is like the state fund that helped pay for like the restaurant on West State and stuff. That one that closed? It's Morton. Morton, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah that's the that was a revolving This is old HUD money from the 1970s that was granted to the city, and they're high risk loans, and we've, we've been successful 95% of the time, but there's been a couple that we haven't been in West Morton. The first loan Maybe given out in the early 80s went belly up for 200 or something. I got a question for you. Since we are a golf course owner, when's the last time our own golf course has been in the black? Mm -hmm. Probably in the early 80s. Yeah. I just have a problem knowing that, loaning money to a golf course, knowing that it ain't going to make it. Well, the one suggestion that came up from the golf committee that I'm we counting had. on that not being true, by the way. <laughs> from our, from our yeah. aspect, it's true. Yeah, I, I uh, think the we, private we, sector no offense can run one better than the public we, uh, sector. We put money into it every year just to get it through the year. So, yeah. If I can uh, just report from what the golf committee, you were on the committee too, do you want to talk about what they talked about? As far as? There was one proposal from the golf road to close the, the, the close course. part of it. It's kind of early though to talk about that too much. I think if it is, yeah, if there's I not enough of the golf course here, maybe art would be in the box. <laughs> well, I would, I would turn around with what Mr. Roan said that he can run it more efficiently than the city can. If we closed ours and had that one open, he could probably make it. Right. You, you, know, you know what? The other people probably thought the same thing. And even if you're right, good luck on property taxes around there. Because you're going to see real estate values go down. I can I can, assure, I can assure you that if you don't do this and John doesn't open the golf course, you'll have more than that room can hold up here complaining. That's because fine. I've received phone calls, Aaron's received mm -hmm. them. They're worried about what's happening with their property value. Mm -hmm. And, and that's in that's the uh, unique thing about this. This is a neighborhood business. <laughs> it is, and I know there's property out there for sale that hasn't sold for years. You know, I know how the boss keeps coming and we've tried to build new homes and get that generated and going out there, and it hasn't made. John John has other plans for out there too. I mean, he, he tends to do banquets, and part of his request is for. I mean, uh, I'm not. I'm not you know, I'm just throwing this out. I mean, it's in, I think it's in your packet. You know, put Boshi Ball out there and, uh, and and do banquets out there and make it a, more of a destination than just for golf, okay. which I think is, to be quite honest with you, Bill, your concerns yes. about does a golf course make money? I, I don't know. Ours don't, but maybe those sorts of things put you over the top. Yeah. You, you have to have the golf course to draw anybody out there for anything else. That's the only reason to even try to keep that as a golf course. The golf course in and of itself can stay alive with some minimal maintenance plan out there. You have to be able to draw people out there. You have to say, look at that pretty pond and that nice green out there. Now sit down and eat a steak and drink five beers and we just made enough money to keep the place going. That facility's never had that. And so that's those are our intentions, is to build an outdoor courtyard. There's no other sizable outdoor courtyards. Mulligan's has six, you know, a few tables outside. Muggsy's has a few tables outside. Um, you don't have places that would rival some of the wineries within 30 to 60 minutes of here. Our goal would be to, to put something in Jacksonville to keep people showing up here on a Friday or Saturday night as opposed to going to an Oakford, to a Petersburg, to Hand of Fate, to a Sheedy Shores, to places like that. That's when he could run that place for a, a cigar store. Aficionado. Yeah. And they have a sand volleyball court out there, which I know they've had some tournaments, so there's lots of draws out there. And another thing, I mean, this is way early in the development, but um, Buena Vista Farm's getting out of the wedding business, and she's been advertising that for months. Terry and I are getting together tomorrow to talk about how we can incorporate her wedding business at Northridge if this all goes through. 
but there's so many so many things I can try to get to put together in the hours of the day. Hunting water and praying for rain have been the top two mm-hmm. in the last couple of days. Again, your rain. Hey, Amen. Um, and you guys might already know this, but is there a homeowners association fee out of Applebee's? Laura or, uh, Place, the street of Laura Place has its own homeowners association, but none of the rest of the greater Applebee Farm subdivision does. So I wonder if there might be a way. I mean, if if what you say is true, Mike, that we're going to have a packed room in there, would some of the other property owners out there be willing to um, support it or be invested yes. in some way? Um, and I don't know if that's you know, something you've considered or how that was going to They all got a letter in their mailbox today asking for their support of what we're trying to do. Right. And so the jury will be out on that. You know, there's, there's a lot of issues to this, and not, not bad necessarily, but, you know, it's supposed to be one job created for every $15,000 borrowed. The interest rate is 0.5. The second position for a quarter of a million or 0.5. Dan, is that normal? I hate to put you on the spot. When we've had sizable loans, it's typically a much shorter 15 year payback. Typically it's a little bit higher That's interest rate than the 0.5%. So John's in a tough position because he's trying to make the books work. And so he needs the interest rate as low as possible for as long as he can get it. But that the money generated to loan back out to new applicants is based upon the payback, so the longer you tie this money up. But in the last the last time we talked about this project, it was sold as the state wants us to take risks, the state wants us to give out money, not to have it sitting in a bank, in, in their bank, that they want us to take advantage. But they have not said, when you take those risks and loan all the money out, we will give you more, there's no guarantee. So this, if you this could loan money, out 125, 150,000 and may not be able to do anything <coughs> further unless you decide to tap into the securities investment fund. How much are we lose on the, the restaurant? The West 90, 90. 90. 90. What if we get out of it if it goes belly up? What if we can get back out of it? If it went belly up, your choices would probably either be to buy out the first mortgage and take over the property yourself. Which is the first owner. First owner, or just let it go. Because question: if this one doesn't work, the question is, what is the possibility somebody else, third time around, would come in and try and buy it? So, what was the value for that land as farm? Six hundred. Because I think they were listing it for six hundred. With the with it was the listed for six hundred. It was listed for six seventy-five. Mm-hmm. You can ask whatever you want for anything you own. Right. I mean, would we be half owners, or would we be? Is he still going to be the full owner, this other gentleman, if, if it doesn't make it? <clears throat> the owner is financing a portion of it. He's going to have a first mortgage on the property. So if there's a default, if we don't pay off that first mortgage, when he forecloses, we are out. We had the same option, if we wanted to, to buy that <coughs> restaurant, restaurant for about you know, throw another $100,000 into it. And, and I think at that time we talked about that we wanted to always try to be the first mortgage. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we always take the second position. But before we said we didn't want to be in that position anymore, we were going to try to be the first mortgage. The problem is the mission of the revolving loan fund, it says it on the front page of the DCEO's loan fund criterion, is to bridge the gap that you've got. And the gap is not a first if you got the first mortgage, that's not the gap. The gap is what's after the first is, is the issue. I've, I've, believe me, I don't make bring my second mortgages either for the same issues you guys are kicking around. So I understand that side of things. But I think I mean, the concept with this is you don't want the government in general to be the first mortgage position because we don't really know what we're doing. You're trying to come in on the second position behind a, a mortgage, like a bank who's really on the line. Who knows what they're doing and that's a little bit different in this case because there's no bank involved there's no bank that's the owner of you can we so uh, she's going to go to the bank and get a can we talk about no. this again no, in not two weeks he, is, he said the owner is going to the get generation a of these letters created. he's going to give the owner a mortgage i don't think you got that i thought he i thought he said the mortgage you don't have so the mortgage yeah. the, bank. the owner okay. is going to be the bank for the first mortgage so it's like it's more mold the, the other yeah. thing i can kick yeah. in would be a second mortgage on the fitness world property as well 
if that helps shore up the collateral position and make everybody feel better about us not walking away from 60 acres, we'd have to walk away from the $2 million building as well. You better talk to Rachel before you say that. <laughs> She'll be all right. <laughs> she loads the arrows in my quiver, Steve. I just shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> what is your what is the recommendation do you want you want to pursue this it sounds like but you want to hash out some details is that right is I, that i'd like to give them i'd like to for more money than what's on the table if that really helps them and look what they've done to the community right yeah for fitness world it's well. incredible it's great yeah i'd like I'd, I'd like to support this project i was saying we should clear out the loan whatever's in that fund and give it to them instead of waiting for something else to show up well, you already have an application for someone else. Pardon me? The Thai people have already come forward. Is that correct? The, I do not have applications in hand. But I they've come and Pardon talk, me? They've come to talk to you. Yes. But it's for a restaurant that's going to compete with Fuji, Fujimo. It's also more, it's more uh, employees, which is part of, you know. Not, not if another restaurant closes because they're competing and can't get enough well, we money. We can't judge. We can't figure right. out what people are going to do down the road, what's one going to make it, which one's not going to make it. Right, so that's not our job. We use money when we have it. We don't no, you, yeah, you're, you're right, Lori. Your, your job is to design the merits of the loan, not whether it's competitive or at the well, if we get more applications, we'll have to make the decision at that time to transfer money in there. Well, this is the only application we have to Is your house located on the golf course line? Yes. So you have really a vested interest. So, I mean, I understand, no offense, but I understand where where you're at um, on all of this. Yeah, and I represent the rest of them. I agree. As well. Right. But I, and I know the Rones, you know, um, so it's, we're all friends and it's, it's difficult, but I think, we have to make a decision that's best for the for what's important now um, and what's important down the road. I can tell you, if, if John doesn't buy it and weeds grow up and they do what they think they could do with farming, you're, you're yeah, how much more on property tax fund? than what you're talking about. How much we got in our gambling fund? A little over 400,000. 400,000. Can yeah, we that reach was... in for 100,000 and 100,000 from that loan and do it? And still leaves John, leave the treasurer Thank money you. to work with. I mean, that's something the council has to decide. It's the council's decision what they want to do with it. But you still got the security investment funds too. So we do the hundred thousand out of here, then we go security investment funds. <clears throat> the problem with the security investment fund, the money that is currently lent out to quite a large, incredibly well paid. Is at three percent. I guess, John, to put you on the spot, that's the issue. There are some other sources of funding, perhaps available, that the council can consider, but not at a point five percent interest rate. Mm -hmm. And if we can do something at the competitive rate with the other loan we've got at three percent, that was two and a half the other day. So which. Yeah. It's three. Yeah, and and, and I, this John, I owe you an apology Jackson, for that because <laughs> when, when I got into the when I got into the contract for that property, he paid two and a half percent until 2014, then it went He's up to three percent. And Dan confirmed that with me, so it is currently three okay. percent, and he has been paying three percent. But if that is something that you would entertain, we could have something ready. But that, if you're gonna. <clears throat> Can we shorten the years? I mean, can we go 15 years? We can, can do a balloon. longer amortization with the balloon payment. Yeah. That could work. So his payments would stay at a lower amount with a balloon payment down the road. It's going to get paid off a bit longer. Yeah. But Most commercial financing from the commercial banker's perspective is on a balloon payment. So every five years, 10 years, 15 years or something. I my first payment it, house on the balloon. It, so I know. It recent. So that's typical i mean that's my first mortgage would be set up on a 30-year amortization and a five-year balloon in five years i've got to go to a commercial bank and show them that yes this is a bankable project and so i have no issue doing a balloon within that 10 15 year timeline it's the monthly payment that chokes you to death if you have to amortize it over that 10 or 15 years it's hard for me to tie up that much money for that long a time Right. Or the councils down the road that need to use that for other projects. 
And one other issue, to make it even more complicated, is if you take 100 to 125 out of or this, whatever, yeah, whatever, and make up the balance out of the securities investment fund, those are two separate loans. So we have to work with John so that by having two loans, his payments aren't going to go skyrocketing because he's having to have two debt services. But we can, if that's the direction you want to go, 100 to 125 out of or whatever the council what says, but yeah, that's a good number. 100 out of this and 150 out of securities investment. Yeah. We can work on that, work with John and make sure it's workable with you, and then be back to you in two weeks with the long paperwork, the formal approval of that. But we didn't want to go that direction into securities investment. We've only done it one time. That's your decision, not ours. And Ron doesn't want to be in the position every time somebody comes in to say, Oh, I don't have that much money, but I got some money over here. Yeah. You control that, not him. With the revolving loan fund, again, this is not a we we obviously have very good success loaning out of there, but that makes us a bank almost. It's not it's not HUD money anymore. It's not it's it's taxpayer money. So let's say we deplete this time. Okay, I'm not suggesting I'm just using this as an example. We deplete it tonight. So you get loan applications coming in. What do you tell them? We don't have any funds. If somebody comes in tomorrow, yeah, I'd have to bring it to the council. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to tell them anything. But I'd have to have them fill it out. We, kind of Twenty years ago, we probably didn't. Plan yeah, well, that's when you go. Yeah, that's, that's, that's when you go state. We also had at that point, right? So if somebody came in tomorrow with a filled out application, I mean, so I'd have we... to come back to the next council meeting and say, well, "I've got another request for X number of dollars." And we have no money. Where is this? I, I, I couldn't commit to it. I never do. Right. That's the council's decision. It's not, you know. Well, right at this moment, I think it's a lot to swallow for us as a council. I think we need a little time to think about it and talk to people. So if I had to do it tonight, I couldn't do it. So uh, unless you have a plan, I can't do it tonight. Can you do 100 tonight? I could do 100. Let's, I think but we need to get the ball rolling, though, because he has five he months. Has Time frame. So is everyone happy with 100? But uh, you know, 125, you split it halfway. Okay, so is everyone happy with 125? My question is, if we give him 100 or 125, is that going to be enough for him? Is that going to be enough for you? With uh, that's going to help. Help yourself. I mean, it's, and it's going to be sustainable to keep you moving. Like I said. I'll make anything work. I just every every impediment that I can get out of my way is going to give us a greater chance of being. Now, John, this this so, wouldn't be you I, to pay down another loan, would it? No. Okay. I'm, I'm, trying, to come, I'm trying to come up with a combined okay. source of funds. I'm that's trying to come up with a total pool of five hundred thousand okay. dollars between the owner who owns it now. Hopefully the city and my own funds. Great combination of those three things need to add up to five hundred somehow total use of funds. So if I return to that question, is everyone happy with one hundred twenty-five, and then we can work on the next fifty-eight that's in that loan by the next meeting, or the security investment. In, in, in a week, would much? you know if you got it all together? In a week, I mean, can we have another meeting? I, I'm prepared. If you guys say no, we're not doing a darn thing. I'm going to make this work. Just so you know, I mean, I'm gonna make it work one way or the other. I just assume not to do it without your help. <laughs> I just assume do it with your help. So if the I'm good with you, anything will work. Might I just yeah, in that regard, the 125 that we're paying is towards the purchase of this. Sure. The revolving loan fund has some difficulty making loans once a project is ongoing. You don't have that restriction now. The securities and investment fund. With the revolving loan fund, it's kind of a but for, but for this money, it's not going to fly. Once he is in business, if he wants to come back and say, my debt service just isn't working, I need some additional funds, you probably wouldn't be able to use revolving loan fund for that, but that's you know, when you could do the securities investment. That's fund. really a catch-22. I mean, the project's begun the minute you think of it, but you know, once you do physical stuff and are open, you're not supposed to loan the guidelines say you can't do it if the project's 
they can't start the project prior to approval. Yeah. How did, did we run two loans for Crush? Pardon me? Did Crush have two loans to yes. the revolving loan? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. How much was that for? Uh, they owe 28000 I think. Okay, so they had two different loans. They so came they, in with a second phase, a different type of right. business, didn't they? Yeah. That's how they justify right. the second one. Okay. Yes. Okay. He catches it up. I think it's fine. A few months and he catches it up. All right. So it sounds like we're ready to go next week, next meeting for 125000 to involve the loan. Is that okay? Can, can we know about the other restaurants and then we can adjust, do a change on that to hire? No, no once it's, it goes in, it's going to be that, that amount. No, I'm saying at the next meeting. You want to increase it if possible. Right. I think we bring it to the next meeting. Right. It's going to be the 125, and that's where we're going, because he has to work on his finance. Okay. But I don't understand what the hang-up is on the amount, because sooner or later, you're going to deplete this fund. Right. These people sitting in our spots 20 years ago wouldn't have guessed we still got money in that fund. Right, and so... Uh, you can so do, you empty it down, you, can you do, may empty right. it a month, Follow you may empty it a second. Follow up what Alderman Monkle said. Mr. Smaldanis is going to have to go to the state after, if, assuming a Thai restaurant comes in and gets the rest of the money, he's going to have to go get the money anyways. So the interest off this loan go back into this month? Yes. Yeah. Hey, Ron, how much money so did, will, will, how much money did we start summer. out with summer. at the very beginning? In the revolving loan side? Mm -hmm. 600? I don't remember. I, I got to be honest with you. I, that's, you got me. I want to say, Less than six hundred thousand dollars. So what are the other projects we funded? Pardon me? What are the other projects we funded to this yeah, over over thirty years? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Ron. <laughs> well, bring well, I mean, a lot. <laughs> what are some what are some recent ones? I don't see the list. This is, this is one of the larger ones. This would be one of the larger ones, for sure. Uh, Jefferson, uh one eighty five thousand. Eli Bridge, yeah, yeah, Eli Bridge, Eli Bridge, Bridge was a big one. The dental place of New Corner by the Brick House. Uh, Lynch. Haven't done one in a year. Lynch. I mean, well, what's your issue, Bill, with this? Depleting it? The risk of uh, running another golf course for the city? Tony's got nothing else to do. Now, if, if you guys decide 125 <laughs> and these other loans don't pan out or even if you turn it in, well, yeah. We're not going to run out the golf course. We're going to turn to farmland just like we have at the water, the deep watering facility. So that's where the money will go. I think we're comfortable with 125. Right now. Okay. I mean, that's where I think we're that's comfortable. That's who goes 125. This we'll world. do that for the next meeting. Which is more than the 100, not quite the 250, but if we go with the security investments down the road. Down well, the we road. can't pull the 250 anyway, so. 250 was. If you so have a, if you decide to do a security investment, you'd want a finance committee meeting. Right, definitely. And that's something yeah. that technically should be referred to the finance committee. Can I shake things up and say we should put tariffs on our, our uh, no. steel No, no, you can't. Shake the things no. up so I can negotiate this to I do have John's liquor license, though. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, I was going for these days. <laughs> a lot. We're throwing that in the loan, too. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the way you're doing it. Like, like Dan said, Security you investment know, doesn't have all the restrictions on it. The restrictions are what you make of it. So getting the hard part out of the way first is really where you're going. If you want to pursue the security yeah. investment, we'll do it. 15 years on a balloon? Yeah. All right. And then um, after that, we're talking about securities to, to take him up to that 250. All right. We gotta adjourn. Thank you, everybody, for the consideration. Well, you're doing a good job.